picture was photographed in combat zones by cameramen of the Mediterranean Allied Air Forces and by pilots of the 12th Air Force, who, during missions against the enemy, operated automatic cameras in their planes. Behind the pilot, shooting forward and back. Under the wing. In the wing, timed with the guns. In the wheel well. In the instrument panel, photographing the pilot himself. The commanding general of the United States Army Air Forces, General Carl Spots, has asked me to tell you something about this picture. I, uh, I don't think I could do any better than just to read from his telegram to me. Thunderbolt was made in 1944. That's ancient history. It was made about one fighter bomber group in the Italian campaign. It happens to be an American group. But the same story could well be told of the Royal Air Force groups which participated so gallantly in the same air offensive. As a matter of fact, the story belongs to all men who fought for freedom and did it a long way from home. Signed, Spots. Thank you. Italian man in the street, or what's left of the street, this is the fulfillment of a promise. The promise of the fascists to build a 20th century Roman Empire, conceived in tyranny and dedicated to the proposition that some men were meant to be slaves of other men. Special victims were the children. They saw things not meant for children's eyes. From the air, Italy is more remote. The airman never sees the face of the people, only the face of the country. From the air, you look down at the mountains. Look down and wonder how our men on the ground ever got through. Mountains and rivers. The Volturno, a lot of American blood in that one. Natural barriers made other campaigns tough too. Exhausted Hannibal's elephants, Caesar's legions. For the airmen, the ground war is remote. The only war you really understand is the air war. You can see a pattern to it. Lots of the country never been touched. Little towns that walk the ridges, like tightrope artists to keep from falling off. This one didn't matter. When something did matter, that was another story. This is how we change the face of Italy from the air. Boasted Italian trains ran on time. Not these. This is what we did to the face of Italy. There's a story behind why we did it and how we did it. The story starts on an island, 60 miles off Italy's coast, the island of Corsica. Corsica. Rugged. Primitive, mountainous, malarial. Here they still remember a local boy who put Corsica on the map 150 years ago. This island part of France was liberated by the French in September 43. But you can still find a few Germans left by the wayside where they fell in the shadow of our airdromes. Alto Air Base, Sunday morning. Here, 
Sunday is like Monday. And Monday is like every other day in the week. A working day. The engines wake you at dawn. In your sack, you can hear the crew chiefs pre-flighting their planes. Getting them ready for the day's missions. This is how you live when you're an airplane driver, fighting an air war, 20 minutes from the Germans in Italy. You're used to it. You've been washing out of your helmet since July 42. From the Holy Land to Africa, across the desert, Egypt and El Alamein, to Libya and Tunisia, 1,300 miles. You moved when the infantry moved. Sicily and Italy. 58 moves in two years. Now Corsica. This is the best deal you ever had. Call it the country club. When you talk about air power, this is what you mean. You mean Spanky Manda. Major Francis S. Manda of Metmore, New Mexico. Squadron operations officer. Not a desk job. Got over 170 missions. Working for 200. He's 22. You mean Captain Howard Hickok of Ames, Iowa. He's a flight leader. Just had 30 days in the States. Time to get married and come back. He's 23. Or, in his Italian general's trailer, Gil Wyman, Louisville, Kentucky. Hardly looks old enough to vote, but he's boss of a squadron. He signs his letters, Gilbert O. Wyman, Lieutenant Colonel, Air Corps, commanding. The old man. He's 24. Sunday morning. For the 57th fighter group, 